Hi, my name is Karthik and I am a web developer and the founder of WPAlgorithm.com. Before I talk about anything else, thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers and for believing in the vision that I have for WordPress and Elementor. It means a lot, but I'll save the party for when we hit 50,000 subscribers, right? And in this video, I just want to talk about Elementor Custom CSS. Most of you are really confused about how to use CSS in Elementor. What do you really need to learn about it and how to get started? This video will shed some light on it. And I've recently made a course, an Udemy course for just for Elementor beginners. And you can check that out and it explains each and everything that you need to know about Elementor and custom CSS right from the very scratch. So it's actually a fun way of learning CSS in the Elementor interface, the way it should be learned for Elementor. So in case you're wanting to get that course, link to that will be in the description. But in this tutorial, I'll just give you a brief overview of how CSS works. Let's get into the tutorial. So what exactly is CSS? CSS is essentially the style of your elements and the element can be a section, a column or a widget. And most of the controls are tucked into the style tab of every section, column and widget. So there are two practical ways when you'd need CSS. For the most part, Elementor provides them in style and advanced tabs for margin, padding, Z index, all that stuff. And that's good enough for the most cases. But one, when you find styles on the internet or when a client asks you to build few elements that are not possible using Elementor native interface. So for instance, if you take this button, when I hover over it, you can see the animation and that's not quite possible using Elementor button, right? It's still a button, but it needs a little bit of tweaking and that's when you need CSS. Here's another example. When I hover over it, you see another text popping from the bottom and that's another example when you'd need CSS. And again, there's one more example when you basically need properties that are not possible to change using the native Elementor interface. So for the most part, when you're working on large scale projects, your clients might ask you for complex styles or when you need to just make your website stand out, you'd need a basic knowledge of CSS. And to target any element, by element I mean a section, column or a widget, you usually inspect them and see the classes in the elements. I'll just drag in an Elementor button. I'll just align it onto the center. I'll minimize the side panel. And if I right click on this button and click on inspect element, I get to know its class name. And you can see it's basically Elementor hyphen button. So that's one of the classes assigned to the button by Elementor. You just need to target it to change the properties that you need. Okay. I'll just give this button a class name so that we are specially targeting this button or you can also give it an ID. I'll click on this button, go to the advanced tab, give it an ID of DA hyphen button. And the names should be like this. They should be either alphabets separated by hyphens. There cannot be spaces in class name or ID and ID should always be unique for that page because ID as the name might suggest is unique, right? So since I gave this button an ID, I can put the CSS anywhere, right? But I'll just go right into the custom CSS area of the button. And by the way, you need Elementor Pro. If you don't have Elementor Pro, you might need master add-ons to add this CSS module, or you can put it in the customizer area of your theme. So you can simply say hash, since it's an ID, you say hash DA hyphen button, and then you give a space, and then you say dot elementor button. Okay, now we're targeting the element and you also need to add flower braces opening and closing right, like this. And within the braces, you need to put the code that you need. So you can simply say background image. Let's add a gradient background to the button. So I'll say linear gradient. I'll specify an angle for that. Comma, the colors red, blue, and green. And just like that, I have three gradient button, right? I can change the angle and the whole thing is changed. 
right and i have to close this property with a semicolon just like that so we targeted that button and just changed and made a gradient button just by using a single line of css code right we just made a unique button this is again not possible using just elementor interface now i'll just take this button as an example any of the button from this website this is get scan.com by the way and let's actually take this code I'll just click and it copies the CSS required and I'll just paste it below this I'll paste it and it also pasted HTML we don't need HTML because Elementor already has HTML and that's the reason why we are seeing this button but here you have something called button hyphen 49 so this dot button hyphen 49 should be replaced with this whole thing right the hash da hyphen button space dot element button if we replace dot button 90 49 with that this whole code will basically apply to this button so i'll actually take the whole css and as you can see once i replaced that dot button hyphen 49 with this phrase which is our dot hash da hyphen button space dot elementor button you see the button gets the same properties right so this is what we really want and just like that we've ported this button into our elementor interface right when i hover over it you can actually see this button in action so that's one way to use css in a very practical way to achieve unique designs without writing much of code just by understanding the way Elementor works. And secondly, there's another property called CSS cursor. You can customize the cursor when you point at it and there are different properties. So let's say when I hover over this particular inner section, I just want to change the cursor. I can simply click here instead of giving it a class name, you can say selector. This is something very specific to Elementor and give flower braces. And within that you can use a property called cursor and the cursor property can take a lot of different values let's take the zoom in value and paste it since we pasted this into the intersection whenever I hover over this I get this zoom in cursor right so this whole intersection cursor property is set to zoom in and that's why I see this cursor I can also change this to out you see minus right there are different values for that property and maybe you can try this as well I'll copy this and paste it in here you can see the disabled or no drop cursor taking place right just with a line of code it's not really code it's quite simple right we changed essentially things that we really want in a fun and artistic way and this is why you need CSS you need to understand how to inspect elements, give them an ID or class and then target them using custom CSS, right? If you do that, well, for the most part, Elementor gives you the controls and you, and when you work on things that Elementor doesn't allow you to, you can create stunning designs. And this is when you need custom CSS. This is just a brief overview of what you can do if you understand CSS. If you want to truly learn CSS, you can get the Udemy course from the link in the description that will explain each and everything of CSS, especially for the Elementor interface, so that you can be a master in web design along with the tools that Elementor provides you. Thank you so much for watching and to learn more about Elementor custom CSS, to master it, to learn it step by step from the scratch, check out the Udemy course, link to that will be in the description. Also. You can get Elementor Pro from the link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.